With the changes that we're seeing, it's made a lot of people uneasy. And out in West Texas, once again, around San Angelo, there's going to be the Jade Helm 15 uh, operation starting in mid-July. Can you update? There's lots of rumors out there uh, about a lot of scare, a lot of fear. Can you kind of shed some correct light on it? Uh, I think one that many people in this country, you know, have a distrust of government. And of course, that's a healthy thing. Our country was founded as a limited government. In fact, when the Constitution was first written, the 13 states wouldn't adopt it because there were no checks on the government. They had no Bill of Rights. They sent it back to the drawing board and said, we're not signing until you give us a Bill of Rights. So I think an American that understands the value system of this country has a fear of government. Uh, I have a fear of government, but it's not an illogical fear. It's not a fear that's based on you know, emotion. It's simply the idea that we know that, uh, that power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Our founders recognized that and they had a system of checks and balances and a Bill of Rights. So I don't fault anybody for having a fear of government. It's a healthy fear. Uh, and if you believe in limited government, you carry that around in your back pocket. Uh, you hear politicians tell you something and you say, okay, well, let me verify that. So, however, with this current administration, I think it's undeniable that, that particularly uh, the red states, uh, and most of those are in the south and the west, they, uh, they do not trust this government as, they've, uh, you know, as they would, I suppose, a Republican that was in power. They, uh, they view the Democrat Party as a party of big government, and the government is the solution to everything. And they've seen the Obama administration make a lot of missteps. Um, and so they have a, uh, a fear of government that, that sometimes, in some cases, borders on the bazaar. Uh, I hear rumors, and I've heard them for years, that you know, President Obama is building a concentration camp in North Texas, and the DS, the, the Department of Homeland Security, is coming to round us up, and they're buying up all the ammo, and therefore we better go get our guns and, and get survival things. Um, you know, so these rumors spread. I mean, in an open society, and particularly in today's cyberspace, anybody in their underwear can blog and Google anything they want to Google and blog. Um, but I can tell you, I've been in the military for 20 years, we are not that competent. We couldn't develop a concentration camp right under the eyes and nose of our media and the people of this country without there being concrete knowledge about it. There's no little green men at Area 51. The, uh, you know, the Bush administration didn't do an inside job on the Twin Towers, but these types of things somehow have a life of their own. The military does a lot of exercises all the time. In San Antonio, we do exercises about every month at Camp Hullis. Uh, but this one is particularly has taken on a kind of a life of its own because you've got some Green Beret soldiers that are actually exercising for a scenario. What military exercises do is we anticipate a scenario and then we train what if that scenario happens, what would we do? In 2002, Congress passed a, a law creating U.S. Northern Command, which is a combatant command in Colorado. We've never had a combatant command that had a mission of protecting the homeland. And, um, but they've got a, you know, that's a real threat. We could have a cell, for example, of 30 or 40 radical Islamic jihadists that would take over a small town somewhere. It's happened in other parts of the world. They would go into a school and kill every kid in the school, go into a hospital. And it might overwhelm the capabilities of our, of our local law enforcement. Therefore, you'd have to call in the military. So the military has to be trained. What if this would happen? What would we do? That's all this exercise is. I mean, what would we do if we had a situation like this? Um, which could very well happen. If we don't train for these exercises, then we're not going to be able to respond in a timely manner. So, the military is here to protect us, not to destroy us. And as a practical matter, we are the most heavily armed people on the, on the face of the earth. Um, this year in deer season, 400,000 people in Wisconsin took to the fields with guns, and nobody got hurt. In Pennsylvania, another 500,000. In Texas, I don't even know what the numbers are. Uh, we're the most heavily armed people on the face of the earth. It couldn't happen. Even if there was some type of a, a sinister plot, it simply couldn't happen. Uh, we realize what the Second Amendment was written for, and Texans are heavily armed. It simply could not happen, even if folks wanted it to happen. Um, and many members of the military, the military only follows lawful orders. They cannot arrest, they cannot search and seize. That's a violation of the Posse Comitatus Act. They cannot uh, execute a search warrant, violation of federal law, and they cannot participate in arrest. That's the law. 
And the military knows that law. As a JAG officer, we train our military officers. Here's what the law is. If the president or anybody else gave them an order to engage in arrest and searches and seizures without emergency authority, they wouldn't do it. It's an illegal order. And we will not follow illegal orders. Simply would not do it. That's reassuring.